Thanks, Sheriff Massey. Good job. Yeah, I, yeah, obviously people come from all over the state to participate in a Victims Visitors Day, but I'm just curious, how many are actually from the Omoki circuit? Would you raise your hand? Wow. Wow, what an impact. Shalander, what an impact. Right, right here, home folks. Well, good morning to all of you and welcome to the State Boards of Pardons and Paroles Victims Visitors Day. You know, Shalander, actually, I think we should consider changing the name of this event to Victims Input Day. Yes, we, we do a lot of visiting, but it's all about input. And the greater part of our state agency has actually been temporarily relocated to Milledgeville in the effort to focus all of our agency's attentions toward victims of crimes on this day. I'm not so sure if you're aware of this, but since 2006, the parole board has been committed to giving our undivided attention to victims by taking part and co-hosting at least two events just like this every year. And we wanted to make sure that these events were held in the communities like in Milledgeville, Forsyth, or Savannah, or Brunswick, uh, and the list goes on and on where we've actually gone to. We want to make these events convenient, convenient to you, the victims, and to the family members of the victims. A little bit of history about the parole board uh, the Parole Board actually was created by the Constitution of Georgia. We're a constitutional board, and the Constitution says that there will be five members, and each of these members are hand-selected by the governor, and then they're confirmed by the, by the state senate. And as in the past, all five members are here today waiting for the opportunities to meet privately and confidentially with you, or your family members, so that we can take note of the impact that offenders has brought on your family. I want to take a minute to actually introduce each of these members of the parole board to you before we move forward. And I'll start with the vice chairman, James Mills. James, will you stand? J James Mills joined the board in 2011. He's a businessman from Hall County, and he's also committed to public service. He's held many elected offices, even in local government, but also he has spent two decades of his life in the Georgia House of Representatives. And, and Sheriff Massey, you mentioned about the Pledge of Allegiance and God We Trust. Well, actually, James was the one who authored the, the amendment that passed. It was a lot of work that actually you see on the state flag that says, In God We Trust. That's our James Mills, who serves on the parole board. And then many of you know Braxton Cotton, if you can recall the days of the deputy sheriff's time, because Braxton actually is a member of the board. He joined the board in 2013. He's a former state trooper, and he also is a former deputy sheriff here from Balding County. So uh, it's like a, a homecoming for him today to be able to come and work with you. He's also the former director of the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council. And then Brian Owens, if you would stand, please. Brian joined the board in 2015. He's the former commissioner of the Department of Corrections, where he actually served under two governors in his tenure before actually joining the parole board. And then Jacqueline Bunn. Ms. Bunn, if you would stand. Ms. Bunn joined the board in 2016. She's the former director of the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council. She's a licensed attorney, and she also was a member of the Attorney General's office. And of course, you've heard my name already. I'm Terry Barnard. I'm the chairman of the board. I came to the board in 2010, and uh, actually my background is banking and finance and real estate. Also was a member of the Georgia House of Representatives as well. Stephen, let me, let me say, we're, we're truly grateful to you. You, you guys, I, I, know, I know you know what you have in this man, but he is really a hero. Uh, I mean, I, I've known him for a short time, but he is a bright light. And, uh, and you've got to be proud of him. He's doing an extraordinary job for you here. And, and I, I was just watching him stand here without notes, which you can tell I have notes. But he stood here without notes, and he called all of your names. And, and frankly, I, he even called some of the names from my agency that I couldn't bring back from my own memory. But anyway, Stephen, thank you so much. The board is grateful to you and your office for inviting us here to the Omoki Judicial Circuit on behalf. You, you know there's a common thread. Hear this. 
There's a common thread between the parole board and the prosecutors all across the state. And that is that we share a support for victims and for their rights. And we work together to ensure that victims have input in the criminal justice process. It's events like this today that give you, the victims and the families of victims, a powerful voice in the criminal justice process. Today is made possible in support by our partners, the Department of Corrections, and you'll get an opportunity to hear from them today. Also the Department of Community Supervision. And those agencies are here, they're available to you to answer questions about inmate incarcerations, or even inmates who are already on community supervision. Sometimes we call that community corrections. Today, today marks the 26th opportunity that have been made possible by the parole board over the last decade, 10 years, where more than 3,000 victims of crime have come and they've met one-on-one -on -one with a member of our agency. We're living up to our mission statement. If you look at the mission statement, it's a small mission statement, but if you look at the mission statement of the parole board, it says that part of our mission is to protect victims' rights. You heard our governor already speak about that this morning, and we're so committed to that as well. It's a key component of our mission statement. And the board is very proud of the fact that no one, absolutely no one, can dispute our interest in crime victims as we make it a critical part of our parole decision process. The information that we will receive from you today will become a part of a permanent file of the offender so that future parole board members can see what you have told us even on this event. And those victim impact statements that you heard the governor speak of, those are in the files as well. And they have become a permanent part of that offender's file so that all board members can see your statements and see how those things in your lives, how your lives have been affected by crime. You know, the state of Georgia requires that we give notice to every registered victim. And I'm also proud to tell you this morning the efforts of the parole board that we actually go beyond, we go above and beyond what the state law requires when it comes to notification. Even non-registered victims are instructed we, we've actually instructed our Office of Victim Services to try to search out all victims, even the non-registered victims, as we are pending parole decisions to help make them informed should they want to, to make statements. And, and this is something that might, might, be seem, might seem a little strange, a little fascinating to you, but every person is a little different in their own thought process. We actually, from time to time, find victims that do not want to be notified. They don't want to hear from the parole board. They don't want to hear from the process. Now, it's hard sometimes to understand that, but there are victims that are that way. They, they, have, they have moved on with their life, and they don't want to re-enter that process, I suspect. But we still try to make efforts to find them to, out of abundance of caution to make sure that they know the processes that we go forward when we're actually considering releases. To those who have made appointments today to record your input, the board looks forward to meeting with you personally, one-on-one. -on -one. And, and I will say this, that even if you don't have a, uh, an appointment today, we're going to accept walk-ins. And we'll be here until the last person has made contact or is heard from. If it takes all day, even until the sun goes down, we'll take the opportunity to hear from you. Let me, let me remind you of a program. I, I'm not sure if you've ever heard of this. How many of you have heard of Victim Offender Dialogue? Would you raise your hand? Yeah, a, a few of you have. I want you to think about what I just said. Victim Offender Dialogue. If you've not heard about that, today as you're meeting with staff, ask them. Ask them if victor of Victim Offender Dialogue is right for you. And today also might be a great opportunity for you to join volunteer programs. Don't leave this area without asking about the Victim Support Partners Program. Keep those two programs in mind. And at the end of the day, of this Victim's Visitor's Day, we will, you will be asked to fill out a questionnaire. And those exit questionnaires, we've noticed in the past that uh, many who have participated 
have left better informed of the Pearl decision process. And we hope that that will be our goal today, that when you leave, you'll have some sense of satisfaction. You'll be better informed of the parole process in itself, even as it relates to the specific offender that you may be talking about or the specific victim that you may be talking about today. I remind you not to be shy. No question is unimportant. Give us the opportunity to help you with all your unanswered questions. And then as I close, lastly, I want to introduce you to a very special group of volunteers. We call them the Victim Support Partners. They're actually victims slash survivors who work closely with our Office of Victim Services and assisting other victims of crime. I'll ask these four individuals if they would stand. Carolyn Preston Taylor. Are you here, Carolyn? Are, are, are they, Shalanda, are the, is the partnership here? Are they not here? Okay, I'll just tell you their names. You can't recognize them because they're not here. But it's Carolyn Preston Taylor, Julie Allison, Levi, and Sheila Simons. They are working as, a, as the coordinators of the, the victim's support partners. And uh, go to their table and find out how you can be, become a part of that partnership if you're interested in working with other victims yourself. And once again, thank you for the opportunity to serve you. We look forward to meeting with you and hearing your stories one-on-one. -on -one.